how do you use Power Automate Cloudflow to get an image and embed that inside of an HTML email? So I've gotten this question like three or four times in the last few weeks, and I thought, all right, probably should just make a video. So what we're going to do today is we're going to build ourselves a flow, and then we're going to get a file from SharePoint, from Dataverse, from Azure Blob Storage, from OneDrive, and somewhere else I don't remember. <laughs> and then what we're going to do is we're going to show you how to get that into the HTML body of your email, because some of them are different than the others, so we want to kind of explain the mechanics there. And more importantly, talking about the mechanics, I'm going to show you how I figured it out. Right When I got the request the first time, I had never done it, but I'm going to walk you through how I figured it out. So no matter where you're getting yours from, you'll be able to figure it out for yourself. Sound like fun? Then let's just switch over to my desktop and take a look. Here's the email that we're going to roughly build, right? And so what we're going to do is we're going to go and we're going to grab these images from different places. And so the Office 365 profile is saying I couldn't remember a second ago. Um, we're going to grab these files from different places. And then we're going to talk about how to get them into the format that you need to get them into in order to send them as an email. And we're going to use Compose as kind of along the way to do that. We're also going to make them attachments. Right, Attachments is not required, but that was a kind of a supplemental request I got as I was asking people about what to make in this video. So we'll also throw them as attachments just for fun. And this is what the flow looks like. It's a very simple flow. Uh, so basically, we're just going to get each one. We're going to use a Compose to understand what's going on. And then we're going to get down here at the end, and we're going to send the email. And the Compose is not part of the final solution. You could definitely delete those. But I kind of like to keep those in there while I'm learning and building. Also, instead of just showing you all the answers here, we're going to build this flow. In, and I think there's a lot you can learn about building flows by watching me go through this process. So let's start a new flow. We'll go over here to Create. And here we're going to choose Instant Cloud Flow. And we're going to do a manual trigger, and we'll just call this uh, flow demo video. I don't know. And we're going to say create. Now, when you're doing this, um, you'll notice I'm using a manual trigger, right? Because we're not trying to learn triggers. So it doesn't matter if your trigger is Power Apps, if your trigger is Copilot Studio, if your trigger is SharePoint. I, I don't care what your trigger is. So anytime I'm just trying to learn actions, I always use a manually triggered flow in order to cut down on the number of moving pieces because I'm not learning about triggers right now. I'm learning about actions. Now, I'm also going to go over here. I'm going to hit save real quick. Now, the first thing we need to do is we're going to add an action. So what we're going to do is we're going to hit a plus here. We're going to say add an action. And we're going to search for Office 365. Right? We're going to start with that one since that's what my other one had. And so under Office 365 users, we know that one of the options in here is to get a user's profile. But there's also to get a user's photo. And so this is the one that we were kind of struggling with in the request I got. So we're going to say get user photo. And it's like, who do you want to get it for? And so we're just literally going to get Chewy at PowerApps911.com. So this will go into our Azure AD, find his profile, and then get his profile photo. So if he didn't have one, there wouldn't be one, but he has one, right? He's a good dog. And so now we got a trigger in action. I'm going to hit save. Now, the reason I hit save is I want to turn off the new designer. So we're going to unselect this, and it's going to take us back to the old one. Why? Because I wasted an hour yesterday morning fighting with this thing, and it turned out it was just a bug in working with HTML and the new designer. So basically, any time a flow doesn't work, I just punch straight back over here to the old designer. And so we're going to just build this one straight off the bat from that old designer. You, If you can get the new one to work, have at it, but good luck to you. So now that we've triggered it, we're going to get a user photo. The first thing I needed to know in order to help this person was I needed to know what was going on. And so what I do is I use a Compose. The same way in Power Apps, we always use labels. In Power Automate Cloudflows, we use Compose to kind of see what's happening. So we go here to Inputs. And under my Dynamic Content, I want the image file content. So we're going to select that. That goes there. And now we're going to do a save and test. All right, that's the save. And then we'll do a test. we got to manually trigger it. We're going to click Test. It's signed into Office 365 users. We're going to click Continue. And then finally, Run Flow. And done. So this ran. What we're after here is to look at the Compose. So this shows us what the file is. Right? What, how did it come back? And so you can see that it comes back with a content type, image JPEG, and then a content and that slash nine, blah, 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 right? All of that garbage. So from years of experience, I know that that's base 64. And I also know that when I send an HTML, HTML, easy for me to say, email, that what I need to do is I need to give it the base 64 along with the header. So this is like 99% of what we need right there embedded. Very cool. Okay, so let's see if we can't get this to work in an email. So what we're gonna do is say edit, we're gonna say new step, search for Outlook, and then down here, we should have our dear friend send an email v2. Remember, when we're doing these steps, this is kind of specific to Outlook in that you know Outlook accepts an HTML body. And so whatever out or tool you're sending it as, as long as the email body can be HTML, the steps would work the same for you. But I am kind of you know an Outlook-centric world. 
So for the two, we're just going to search me. There we go. We'll send it to me. We're going to say flow images embedded video. I don't know. And so then down here, we're going to kind of start with from Office 365. And then now we need to embed the image. Now, when you go to embed the image, what you're going to need to do is you're going to need to switch over here to code view. So you're going to click on this. This is going to give you the HTML editing experience. And so you're going to have to know how to write HTML. And so what we're going to do is we're going to do something like this. Image source equals, and then between these two double quotes here, that's where we're going to put the file just a second. And then with 50, height 50. Right. Oh, I left a little double quote there. And so that'll just make the image a 50 by 50 square. You could leave it whatever it is, and then it becomes this giant thing. So what we really care about here is the format, and that right in between these two double quotes, minus that extra space that's there, we need to get what goes here. Now, your first thing you might try is you might say, well, why don't I just use the get user photo? Now, you'll notice that it doesn't show up here. And if you start to try to search for it, it's not going to auto suggest it. So this is one place that the compose is helpful. Because if we go back to the compose, what I can do is I can go here, click once, hit control C. Now, if we go back down here, put our cursor in the right spot and go to expression, we can paste that in. That's the formula that Power Apps has written for you already, or Power Automate, whatever this thing is. Um, and so when you copy it there, you see the little at sign curly bracket and the curly bracket, those are just visual things, right? So if you just take those off, right, you can always safely delete those when you put that in here. That is what the actual expression is that got what we saw in the compose, which was that whole content type and then content thing. But we can't just use that directly. So there's two different ways that I found to get this out of here. The easiest one is to do this. You're going to take this and you're going to wrap it in the base64 function. That's one of the built-in expressions inside of Power Automate and just put double quotes around the whole thing like that. That expression understands that object that we got earlier, and it says, okay, I can pull that apart, and then grab the base64. Because here in the source, one of the ways that you can do is it wants base64. That's the A's and the B's, the ones and zeros that make up your file. So if we say, okay, that will put that in right there. Make sure you do not have an extra space on it, right? Because that would mess up the code. But that is actually not all you need to do. So the base64 that's going to output is going to be that slash 9y thing that we saw a minute ago. But what we need as well is we need the header. We need to tell it the type of file it is. And so for that, what we're going to do is we're going to put in this whole data colon image forward slash png semicolon base64 comma. That's the header information that says, hey, this is an image file. And then here's the image, right? It's kind of what happens after the comma. That's not going to change for any of your images or assuming you're using a PNG or JPEG, that'll always be the same. So you don't need to worry about that. If you're like, I don't know what happens there, then just paste that in like you did the rest of it, right? This, if I've done it all right, should now send us an email where the subject is that the body will have from Office 365 and then an image control that should show us the photo of the person I forgot who we're getting. We're getting Chewy. Let's try it out. Let's hit save. And let's do that whole test thing again. So if we say test, this time we can do it. Um, no, we can't do it automatically. We've got to do it manually because we got a new trigger here. The Outlook needs to get its uh, signed in. So we'll get that signed in too. All right, we can say continue, run the flow, and done. So there it goes. It's running. And let me switch over and get my uh, email. There you go. There's our subject from me to me. And there's a cute picture of Chewy. Yeah! That's the first one that I was asked. Like, how do I get all this there? It turns out that all they need to do is get the file content. And because it is base64 content-ish, you just then use that base64 function to make it exactly what it wants. You slap that header in there and you are good to go. Okay, so that's getting your user photo from Office 365. Now the next request I got is how do I get to do the same type of thing, but with a SharePoint file. Hey, are you digging this? Make sure you go over to training.powerapps911.com and you can take one of my training classes. I got live classes, on-demand classes, all types of way to, you know, you enjoy my learning style to get learning more structured content from this guy directly. That sounds like fun. Just go to training.powerapps911.com. All right, back to the video. We'll go right here, we'll say insert an action and we're going to search for SharePoint get file. Like so, make sure you want to use file content using path, you use get file properties only. That's not the file, that wouldn't work, right? So we're gonna do that. Where we want it from, my dear friend, Power Apps Videos. And now we're gonna find a file. And when you do this, you want to use a small file, especially in the beginning. It's gonna make your troubleshooting uh, easier to do. You can also get yourself into cases where the file is too big and Outlook will not show it, right? Outlook, I don't know the exact number, but Outlook will only show 
certain base 64 up to a certain size so use a small file to prove it all works and then you can use bigger files until maybe you find the limit for you but so what I want here, if I'd quit talking, is to click on shared documents. Oh, I'm in shared documents. That's what's confusing me. And in here, I've got a little file called like BuddyBot or something like that. There you go. Well, BuddyBot PNG. So this is the same thing. This is going to get a file the same way that get user photo did. And so now we want to see what that looks like. How did it get the file? So we're going to say add an action. And we're then going to do a compose again. Click on here. And for our inputs, same thing. We're just going to put the file content here. That's it, right? Because all we're trying to do is fail fast. We want to see if that works. So speaking of fail fast, before I save this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add one more action. We'll say insert, add action. And so in this case, I don't need the email to go, right? Like I have an updated email. I don't need more spam in my email box if it's from myself. So what we're going to do is we're going to use a terminate and we're going to choose successful or succeeded. All this does is say when the flow gets here, stop, don't go. So that way I don't have to delete my send email step. It's still there because we're going to come back to it. But right now the flow will stop here. One of the best email in the world. Okay, so let's hit save. That says test. And then we're gonna go here and do another test again. And so you're gonna see it return really quickly and it just stopped the flow here. This terminate was one of my bag of tricks, right, for learning faster. But if we can compose two, then we can see that, oh, look, it's that same output again. So it's JSON, right? We know that's be the double curly braces. And if you don't know JSON or JSON scares you, go watch the JSON video. You can't do anything effective in the Power Platform really until you at least quasi understand JSON. Okay. But so that same content type image PNG and then content IVBOR, blah, 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 blah. That's my file, right? Remember this one was the same, same type of format. The content was different, but both of those are base 64 encodings of files. Now, last time what we did was we went and we used that base 64 to get it out there. But really the very first time I ever did this, I got it out a different way. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do my other way. So we're gonna say edit. We're gonna go here to compose to because we wanna test the, that we're getting the right stuff out. We're gonna click on the file content and do a copy. That, that gets the whole little thing in there. We're gonna exit out and go to expression and paste it in. And so we got the at curly again. We're gonna get rid of that, get rid of that. Okay, so we know that that returns that whole object, that whole record. When you have a record in Power Apps, you use a dot to get down to an individual field. In Power Automate Cloudflow, you use a question mark. Then the field needs to be wrapped in a square brackets and in a single quote. So this is where your field name goes. And in our case, it is dollar sign content, right? If we were paying attention to me go that JSON, we saw dollar sign content. We'll say, okay, if I've done this correctly, hopefully I have, then what we're going to find is that this will return just that starting of the IVBOR. It won't return all that other stuff because all we need is that raw base 64. So let's hit test and find out. All right, my test ran. And if we expand compose, ha ha. So this is another way to get to that raw base 64 without using that base 64 function. The other one was probably easier, but because I have used this method a lot because I'm more comfortable with this method for whatever reason, then that is ideal. But now that we know this gives us what we want, right? What can we do? We'll grab our terminate. We'll drag it under the email because now we do want the email to go. We'll go to email. We're going to copy this and then we're going to go to the end. We'll say paste. We're going to change this to say from SharePoint like so. And then right here, this is where the base 64 goes, right? We still need all that header stuff, but now we want this. So I'm going to click up here once and we know that that gives us a thing. So we'll say control A, control C. We'll go back down here. We'll put our cursor in this location and we'll say expression and paste and then say okay. The other thing to keep in mind is like we can delete these composes at any point. They are just here to make my life easier to kind of validate what's going on, right? But once you're not you're not using them, just delete them. Okay, so let's do a save and a test. Test succeeded. Test. All right, that fired and we grab the email. Ta-da! We got both Chewy and Buddy hanging out there on the screen. So that's the key is you got to get it to what you want it to be. Keeping in mind that if you use a file that is too big, then it is not going to work, right? So if you guys message me, leave me a comment, and you, I love your comments, right? But if your comment says, I did all this, but it doesn't show up in Outlook, and it looks right, first thing I'm gonna say is, did you try it with a really small file? And if you say, well, no, then I'm gonna say, start with a small file, prove that that works, and then, you know, right, fail fast. So now that we understand how all this works, really all I wanna do is we're gonna go back over here to the flow I already wrote, because you don't need to see me do all those same steps again. And so look, this, right? So there's our get user photo. We know how that works. There's our get file content using a path. So then I want to do it with Dataverse. Guess what Dataverse returns? That same exact content. 
So you can just do the whole body download content thing or the base 64, doesn't matter either way. So Dataverse works exactly the same as SharePoint, which is exactly the same as Office 365 users. Nothing different, right? I use download a file or image there. So then somebody said, what about Azure Blob Storage? So I went and got a file from Azure Blob Storage. Guess what? It works exactly the same way again. Um, so I didn't wrap, put the wrapper here, but you'll see in the email below I did. It returns the file the same way. Then they said, what about OneDrive for Business? So I went and got a file with it. And guess what? It returns the stuff exactly the same way. So if you go look at my send an email, all of these are exactly the same, right? That same format. There is the Office 365. There's the SharePoint. There is the um, Dataverse. There's the Azure Blob Storage. There is OneDrive for Business. All of them work exactly the same. Now I did a bonus one here as well. So when you're um, adding file or uh, images, if you have a publicly accessible URL to your image, so that's just a static image off our website. If you have that static URL, then that will work as well for the source, right? So the source either needs to be a publicly available URL or the base 64 written the way that we did there. So that was all I had to do. Now you're saying, well, Shane, but you also did attachments earlier. You're right. You know what you gotta do to do an attachment? You go down here to your send email, say show advanced options. You type in a manual file name. So I typed in Chewy PNG for this one. And then you literally just come over here and under your dynamic content, you just grab this. So you don't need any formula. The thing that comes out of the action, the dynamic content that you got without doing anything is all that goes in here for the attachment contents. None of these are any type of crazy formula, right? They're just all the same. I went here and grabbed this one. And it rewrote the formula. It says body. I promise it's lying, right? We'll just do it real quick to show you that it works. So grab this one, image file content, Azure blob storage, image content, and then OneDrive for business. Oh, it's right there. File content, right? So we just grabbed all those. So let's just do one more test just to prove you that I didn't do any shenanigans here. So we'll say save and we'll do test. Automatic, boom, boom, boom. Test it again. Everything's running here. You can see like, you know, there's the Dataverse. So that was, I pulled, extracted out. Azure Blob Storage, I don't think I did. I think I left it in its format, same format. Uh, OneDrive for Business, same format, right? Just like I told you it was. And if we grab the email, so there you go. There is all the files embedded, like we just talked about, including the one photo from URL. And then up here, these were the different attachments that I just added. So there you go, my friends. That is how you take file content and use it in email, whether it's an attachment or the body content. It's just about getting what, what it wants, right? In this case, you know, the action returned too much. So we just have to kind of condense it down a little bit. And then, you know, in embedding it in the image, we had to kind of throw that base 64 header on there. But nothing too crazy. Now you know how it all works. Questions, comments, leave them below. Always happy to answer those. Um, you know, or if we can help you with this, like these all came from our consulting customers. So these are just you know, we help people every day. We do 30 minute, just quick break, fix stuff. So you just fix something for you. If it's broken, no big deal. All, all the way up to, we'll do full scale, multi-year projects. We've got the live training. We got private training. We got uh, mentoring, you know, we got the university program. We got so many ways to help you. So just reach out. And with that, I'm going to say thanks and have a great day.